Hello everyone, I am Anuradha Haldar. I welcome you all to my channel. We are continuing our series on English grammar and today we will deal with verbs. I have already uploaded lectures on nouns, pronouns and adjectives. I would like you all to see those videos and if you like them, do share and subscribe my channel. So now let us directly move to the topic. Verbs. So what are verbs? Verbs are action words. Words which denote action in a sentence, they are verbs. Now, apart from action, they also, through verbs, we can understand the state of, uh, the, the state and action, both are denoted by verbs. Like, uh, if I take a sentence, he is playing. Now this forms the verb phrase where this is the main verb and this is the helping verb. So you see with this word it denotes the action and this the state the situation like it is in present tense. Okay. So verb denotes the action or state of the subject. What the subject does or what happens to it or what it is. Now verbs can be divided in many ways. So these are topic many of you are asking that uh, the videos that I am making it is for which class. I would like to say that these topics are so common in whichever grammar book you will find you will find these topics. Whichever class you are reading you will find these topics. I have tried to assimilate uh, give you a comprehensive view like if you are reading verbs uh, if you are in class 6 you will not fi find all these classifications when you will move to a bit higher class maybe you will find some of them so what I have tried that to make these videos beneficial for everyone who is interested in learning English grammar so you see we will read it uh, the all the classifications that are possible there are few more cases that I will say later on so see what we will read in this video regular verbs irregular verbs auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs are also called helping verbs transitive verbs intransitive verbs finite verbs and infinite verb okay so this is all that we will discuss. They are forms, they are functions, why they are called so. This we will learn slowly. I think many of you, you know about transitive and transitive verb. You have heard about these terms, but a clear conception and the differences and knowing their forms and uses is very important. So let us move on to regular verbs. Now before moving on to, before knowing what are regular and irregular verbs, you first see that the main verbs or full, full verbs, they have five different forms. So what are the forms that these verbs take? Main verbs, they are not uh, uh, called, they are called full verbs, like they are not helping verbs or auxiliary verbs, the main verbs, the five different forms that they have. At first, let us see that. V0, nothing is added with it. Present or infinite. Okay, infinitive. Like when you say, I like to walk. Now use of to, this is infinitive. Okay, so whenever you are using infinitive, the verb, it is used, nothing is added to it. That's why I have said V0, means nothing will be added. It is used in the present form also or present uh, with infinitives, infinitives also this is used. Next, VS means verb plus S or ES. Now this is present indefinite. Okay. Now when it is uh, present indefinite, I think you have learned that the simple present tense is also known as present indefinite. Okay which you know it by the name simple present tense that it is now when it is used with third person singular like he or she 
और इट थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर ही वन पर्सन नॉट दे नॉट दे विल नॉट बी देयर ओके ही शी और इट और एनी नेम ओके और एनी नेम सो विद देम थर्ड पर्सन इट इज इट इज नॉट आई इट इज नॉट यू इट इज ही और शी और अ नेम दैट मीन्स विथ थर्ड पर्सन सिंगुलर एस इज यूज ओके और यू विल फाइंड लाइक राइट इट इज इट सेल्फ एंडिंग इन ई सो एस और ई एस इट इज एडेड सो दिस इज द सेकेंड फॉर्म इन प्रेजेंट इन डेफिनेट एस और ई एस इज एडेड इन इन्फिनेटिव when it is used with infinitive nothing is added it's v0 then vs let us move on to the third form v ed so verb plus ed so it is used in past or past participle form so you make the past when you were given the uh, a word in the base form and you change it to its past form you add ed okay now when its forms change like the word write write writes wrote here i have not added ed now i will say about it i have taken an example right now you consider this example walked so ed is added to make the past or past participle form now you see this one vn verb plus en irregular past participle form now see walked is the past form also past participle form also like walk walked walked this is the past and past participle form both are the same but for the word write you will see that write wrote written so in irregular past participle form what i am saying you just listen to it i will explain it just now after saying the forms i will say it what is the change in this case so en is added here this is the fourth one last one it is verb plus ing present participle form many of you you know about the past participle form similarly uh, ing when ing is added with the verb it is known as the present participle form like walking okay so these are the five forms which a verb a main verb can take now for regular verbs whenever you will know the base one you will be able to predict the other four part like if you know this one if you know this one for a regular verb you will know the s1 this four one, four forms you can predict for a regular verb regular verbs they have three inflectional inflectional forms means with change in tense ed is added with them but for irregular verbs this is not every time ed will not be added it is irregular in the sense that you cannot make the past or past participle form every time by adding ed see the change right becomes wrote past participle becomes written so this is an example of irregular verb where is the word walk it is an a regular verb why simply so if anyone ask you can you identify can you distinguish between regular and irregular verbs what you will do you will listen to the word and you will find whether you can predict the other forms like if the past and past participle form can be formed by adding ed then it is a regular verb but if it cannot be done if it it's it changes okay right becomes wrote written then it is not following that pattern that with uh, the addition of ed past or past participle form cannot be made then it is a irregular verb so this is the basic difference between the two i will give you more examples of irregular verbs so that the things become very clear but before that i will say you uh, listen uh, to the uses of these forms like present or infinitive like the base form this is the base form of the verb 
so it is used in imperative sentences and in sentences in the infinitive like imperative when you will give orders like open the door the word open it will be used in the base form okay so in imperative sentences this base form is used and in infinitive that i give you an example he used to walk so whenever to is used in infinitive sentences this base form is used and it is also used in uh, all the cases except third person singular because in third person singular we are adding s so third person singular this is this is the only case this is the case where third person singular whenever it is the subject is we will use this whenever the subject is third person singular s will be added to the verb so in all other cases like i work they work we work we use this this form the base form okay now this is having only one use whenever the subject is third person singular s or es es is added now ing for this one ed past or past participle form this is used in simple past tense it is also used in forming perfect tenses like if you say he has walked a lot he wrote he uh, he has walked a long distance so has or have had these are is used in perfect tenses has and have in present perfect and had in past perfect so in in forming perfect tense this past participle form is used in uh, also you will find like whenever we do past participle this form is also used in forming passive voices okay if you when we will do active and passive voice you will see that in passive voice the past participle form is used now the ing form or the present participle form present participle form it is used in the present participle form is also used like uh, it is it can act as the gerund okay it can act as the gerund like if you say walking is a good exercise now what are gerunds i think when i was discussing noun also verbal nouns that we uh, say that they these are verbs which function like uh, nouns like if you write this sentence walking is an exercise now if you ask what is an exercise walking acting as the subject acting like a noun so that is a gerund okay walking is good for health so in all these sentences this will act as this word will act as this verb it acts as the subject or the noun it is also called verbal nouns while discussing nouns i have uh, said this so this is used as a gerund okay so these are all the uses now this one i have not said because it is it is the same thing like this one v ed or ed ed is added uh, to make the past or past participle form in cases of regular verbs and similarly it is added in making the past participle forms of irregular verbs like uh, same thing whatever i have said here that you can just you can put it here for irregular verbs in making the past participle form in making the passive form in making the perfect tense everything like she has written a book she has written a book here has written like we are using the perfect tense there the written is the past participle form so if it is the past participle form then in passive also passive voice also it it is used like she has written a book a book has been written by her so everything that i said this is for regular verbs and same thing you can put here for irregular verbs so see this is used in imperative sentences in infinitive sentences this is used in when the subject is third person singular this is used in forming the past or past participle form for regular verbs that you can use to make a perfect form a perfect in perfect tense you use this past participle form you also use it to make passive voices and this is the same thing for irregular verbs and this ing this is used 
in forming the pre in, in the present participle form here the verb can also function as it takes the form of a gerund where it functions as a subject and it has the characteristics of a noun now i will give you some examples of irregular verbs so that you things become clear and you understand the difference very properly let us see the examples of both regular and irregular verbs i have taken you see the regular verbs they have three inflectional forms base past and past participle where the past and past participle are formed by adding ed like this one admire admired admired now there are some cases let us see when when the last cons the last consonant of the verb it is doubled after ed is added if the last consonant is preceded by a single vowel so there are some exception that i'm saying see this is a consonant it is preceded by a single vowel that's why this is whenever this is the case the last consonant will be preceded by a vowel then this one will be doubled the consonant is doubled when ed is added though there are some uh, exceptions like the word visited benefited okay there are exceptions where though the word uh, t is the consonant it is preceded by i yet it is not doubled okay so this thing you remember one where only ed is added next a case in this case the consonant is doubled next final y of the verb is changed into i before adding ed if y is preceded by a consonant so whenever before y you the most easiest way to learn grammar you cannot remember the rules you learn the examples okay this this examples you just keep them in mind so you can see and tell the rule only like if the last word letter is a consonant last uh, uh, final letter is y then whenever ed will be added it will be changed into i okay if if every time y one thing you have to see y will be changed to i now if when it will be changed if it is preceded by a consonant when it will not be preceded by a consonant it will be added as it is one thing where it is simply added next one where it is doubled third one if it is y last letter is y then it is changed into i only when it is preceded by a consonant whenever it is preceded by a vowel it is added as it is okay it is not changed into i see bury but it but it but enjoy full word it is there okay why has not been changed enjoyed now irregular verbs you see they are also there you cannot predict the past or past participle forms the cases you see where the three forms are same cut 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 there is also there are also cases where two forms are similar past and past participle they are similar okay they are not formed by adding ed but they are these two past form and past participle form they are similar like dig dug dug then there are cases where the three forms are different like that one write wrote written break broke broken so these three forms are different there are also some verbs which can act as both regular and irregular verbs like this one burn burned is also correct burnt is also correct here also it can be when it will be regular verb you will say this one burn burned burned in case of irregular burn burned and burnt so you see this verb it can act both as regular or as irregular one okay so see if you remember the examples only if you remember one case is case only one case you remember and all the rules you will learn okay first one consonant is doubled second one y is changed to i 
when it is preceded by a consonant it is not changed when it is preceded by a vowel and in regular verbs also so where three forms are similar one where only two forms are similar where all the three forms are different and there are also some verbs so don't get confused there are also these cases like this where they can act as both regular or irregular verb let us see now transitive and intransitive verbs so many of you you are acquainted with this transitive verbs are those which are followed by an object or needs an object to complete its meaning okay transitive verbs generally answer questions with what or whom they can be used in both the voices active and passive voice now you see what i said that they take an object to complete its meaning they need an object now that is the definition but how will you understand whether a object it is there in the sentence or not see first you see the sentence i want a book so the verb is want you ask question with what or whom to the verb here you will ask what do i want when the answer that you get that is the object so i want a book so this is the object that means this verb is taking this object so this verb is transitive in nature so this is the transitive verb now one thing one part of the definition is over next is they are used in both the voices in voice change i think you have you those who have learned that you know that we interchange the positions of subject and object so only transitive verbs they can be used in both the voices because if a uh, it is a sentence it is not taking an object then how will you interchange them like i want a book a book is wanted by me this is the passive form okay now if you are not having the object only that will be the case in intransitive verbs you cannot form you cannot form the passive voice only because you need the object for that in passive voice the object only becomes the subject so sentences or the verbs which will not take object they cannot form they cannot uh, uh, form their passive can be cannot be written in their passive form next one you see i gave him a book so this is the verb that is very very clear only the the action that is taking place is giving so the word gave is the verb now you ask i gave what a book okay so i gave directly what i gave a book so this is the direct object whom i gave him this is also an object it is the indirect object okay so i gave what a book to whom to this so this is the direct object this is the indirect object okay so this two examples if you remember this is all about transitive verb which will take an object to complete its meaning which will be used in both the voices active and passive and you will find the object how will you find that if you ask with a question to the verb with what or whom the answer that you get that will be the object now you say this example she came running okay so here you see she came so this is the verb okay now she came what or who whom nothing no answer will get okay so this is an example of intransitive verb but they can take though they will not take objects they can take complements so now this complements can be it it can be they will they will take complements complements means this will help in uh in making the sentence this will complete the meaning of the sentence so these verbs will take complement to to they will take uh, this so that the meaning becomes clear okay to complete the meaning of the sentence intransitive verbs 
can take they can take compliment they can also be formed without taking compliments like if you write this sentence they shouted birds fly anything okay so here there is no compliment yet uh, this is uh, an example of intransitive verbs yet the meaning is complete but in some cases they can also take compliment okay so these two things intransitive verbs they will not take objects they can only be used in active form they are having no object so they cannot be used in passive form and some they can also take sometimes they take complements to complete their meaning now you see there are in in this thing transitive and intransitive verbs this division is made on use like the way we were saying that the walk is a regular verb but write is not because we know that write will uh, write will have the past form will be wrote and written which is not uh, uh, formed by adding ed as is the case with work so these words these verbs only we were saying them whether it is regular or it is irregular but in case of verbs they can be changed means they are used according to their use they are transitive or intransitive don't think that's here i have used want so every time the word want will be transitive according to the use it changes like you see he is playing okay so here it is intransitive now if i make it like he is playing football i have added an object he is playing what football so now this verb is transitive in nature the boy ran the boy ran so here ran is the verb it is intransitive in nature but when i add an object the boy ran what a race so here it is transitive in nature so in regular and irregular verbs the verbs you can say by seeing their forms whether they are regular or irregular but in transitive and intransitive actually we classify them according to their use according to their use in nature in that sentence whether they are taking an object or not i think things are clear the other parts like the auxiliaries which uh, there i will also deal with the modals in detail and finite and non finite verbs that i will deal in the next video thanks for watching like share and subscribe my channel that will encourage me a lot i hope everyone who is interested in learning english grammar and who wants to learn it they will find my videos very helpful it is it is everyone each one of you who whatever class you are in you will find these videos helpful don't think these are of which class will it be useful to me or not you go on you listen to them you watch them you will find them very useful for you